My name is Louie, uh, affectionately called Farmer Louie. I prefer Papa Louie, okay? But uh, I've got seven grandkids, and so they call me Papa. And, and now that I'm to that age, I kind of wear that as a badge of honor. So um, we've been living here in Rick Rial at this farm now for 30 years. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary. This barn that we're standing in right now was built 30 years ago by my father-in-law and I when, when we started this business. And so these cows that are standing behind me are our typical Holstein animals. We milk 1,700 of each one of these all the way to the back. I don't know if you can see on the, on the camera, we're in barn one of five and everything that you can see all the way back gets milked every day, three times a day. So this cow right here, number 1224, she went in the barn to be milked at six o'clock this morning. She'll go in again at two o'clock tonight this afternoon, and then she goes again at eight o'clock this evening, just before you guys are ready to go to bed. They go in every eight hours to get milked. And in each milking, they'll give up to 50 pounds of milk in each milking. A good cow will give 50 pounds. We average 85 pounds of milk a day, which is right at 10 gallons of milk every day from each cow, okay? So, um, with the products that we produce, they use our milk to make ice cream and yogurt. And of course, milk you drink on, on, on your cereal and, and drink for, for meals. We make cheese that helps make pizza and anything we eat tastes better with cheese and butter on it, doesn't it? And so I'm proud to be able to be a part of the beginning stages of the, of the plant, you know, the, the whole food chain that we are part of. Um, and during the virus, uh, we ran, we had to run the farm like nothing happened. We still had to milk our cows. We still had to get up every day and do the exact same thing that we did three months ago. The only thing that we were able to do is I separated all of my employees so that we would not infect each other in case we got sick. Because I know I can't milk 1,700 cows by myself if my crew gets sick or feed them or take care of their health and everything else that we do. We are in Rick Rial, Oregon, a little town outside of uh, Salem, between Salem and Dallas, Oregon, right in the Willamette, Upper Willamette Valley. And today's a rainy day. Uh, yesterday, we were chopping our grass silage and putting in our harvest and working ground to get ready to plant our corn. But today, with the rain, we're all busy doing other things. And so today is a great day to go on the virtual tour. At least it is for me. My daughter, Stacy, is running the camera, and she also works for the Oregon Dairy Nutrition Council. And they partnered with Ag in the Class, and that's where you guys came together and, and got the information to join us on our virtual tour. Okay, so you'll see the animals. I'm gonna talk about the care of the animals now and what we do. This food that's here has been formulated by a, by a nutritionist that comes and looks at our dairy and at our cows every two weeks. He was just here yesterday. We had a couple cows that, that got upset tummies and so Saturday, I sent him a note and I said, John, we, we need a little help. We got a couple upset stomachs. And um, he came out and we adjusted the ration just a little tiny bit. And now we're hoping that that's gonna get better and go away. We watch our animals very, very closely. This is all formulated specifically for this cow, okay? They'll eat 105 pounds of this food every single day. Okay, now as far as dry matter, it's about 53, 54 pounds of food a day if you were going to put it in like uh, dog food style. Okay, so they eat a, a little over a bag of dog food a day. Um, but when you add all the water and moisture to it, it comes to about 100, 
between 100 and 110 pounds a day. In this ingredient is not only hay, corn silage, grass silage, and clover silage, there's also byproducts that we bring in from all over the country. We bring in um, canola meal, which is a byproduct of the canola oil. We bring in soybean meal, a byproduct of soy oil and soy flour. We bring in whole cottonseed, which is a byproduct of the fabric industry. And you don't want seeds in your pants, and so they take all the seeds out, and we feed it for a protein. Dried distiller's grain, which is a corn distiller's. A little harder to get right now because we us usually get that from the ethanol plants. And all the ethanol plants have stopped producing uh, fuel. And so the byproduct of distillers has gone down. Hominy, which is a byproduct of corn flour. Every product we feed, with the exception of ground corn, hay, and alfalfa, uh, alfalfa and our silages are byproducts of the human food chain. Okay, so we take some stuff that humans don't necessarily like to eat or they've extracted what we want out of it and we feed the rest of it to our cows at a very, very close, closely monitored ration. Okay, now these animals are in here eating and you can see that this bar goes back and forth, okay? This, and it's designed to do that. We turn this, this pipe straight up and this little green bar right here gets stuck between the two pins here. Then the animal is what we call locked up. And in order to control the animals and do a health check, every morning when we've put fresh food in front of these animals, we lock them up and that's how we're able to get them all to stand in a straight row. And then we can walk behind them and we can pick out the ones that, that don't feel well. We can pick out the ones that, that need to be bred. We can pick out the ones very easily that need vaccinations and everything else that we do for herd health. We do that all in the morning when we lock up our cows, okay? And they're only locked for the most about 30 minutes because we want our cows either eating laying down or drinking water and if oh she's hungry you can't say we don't have tame cows here <laughs> ouch she just jumped on my hand um did you know here's a trivia fact did you know that cows only deep sleep for about an hour a day and the rest of the time they're laying down um, they're eating or laying down but when they're laying down they're chewing their cud and because they have four stomachs they have to regurgitate their food and they lay there and they chew their cud over and over and over and over again and that's a sign of a healthy cow you can see a cow right down here chewing her cud and she's just standing there. Oh, she just swallowed it. Um, they just, they, they stand or lay there and you'll see them burp and then they begin to chew and then they swallow and they'll wait for the next bit to come back up. Sometimes they got to eat this 110 pounds three or four times before it's finally digested far enough into the intestines. So while they're laying down, let's go over here and take a look where they're, where the cows have a we have a little bit better view these cows are getting ready to have their <clears throat> excuse me getting ready to have their babies they're all about two weeks from having their baby and you can see how they lay down nose to nose cows are creatures of herd mentality they like to be with each other they like to face each other and be around each other cows do not like to be separated or alone they don't like to be trapped in corners. And so we group house everything and they, they really truly do like to lay down nose to nose like they're doing. And these animals, because they're getting ready to have calves, um, they don't eat quite as much, but it's real important that we monitor them very, very closely because at any time, one of these can begin the calving process. We average between six and 10 baby calves born every day. 
One was just born a few minutes ago when we walked over here. So about every two hours, every two to three hours, there's a calf that's born. Sometimes it's 10 in one hour and it's very busy. But we have four employees that are, are like my vets that take care of all the herd health and they take care of the calvings and keep all the records and everything else that has to be done then. And now we only keep the girls because the girls are what make the milk, okay? And the bulls, because of e economics right now, they're all going to California, okay? So the bulls are picked up in the morning, they all go to a facility, they gather a whole truckload, they go to California, okay? They'll probably end up on somebody's beef, beef plate. Our milk cows, are the, the girl cows, the heifers that are born here are, are animals that are our next generation. They are vitally important to the future of our farm. And so we genetically mate, we do everything we can to make this cow's daughter better than her, produce more milk, stand a little bit better, have better feet, just all kinds of different characteristics and, and traits that we want to improve on. And we try very hard to do that. I actually have a man that comes in every six weeks and he genetically mates our cows. He tells us who to mate them to, to get a better herd. And so we've been doing that for almost 40 years. Now we're not a purebred herd, but I can go back probably 15 generations and know exactly who the dad is and grandfather and great grandfather and so on and so forth, all the way down the line, okay? We vaccinate our animals for probably six or seven different things. Just like you guys, when you're little, before you can go to kindergarten, you gotta go to the doctor and you get your vaccine shots. And, and these animals have to have the exact same thing because they're so close together. We wanna make sure that each one of them has a good antibody and a good and a good defense system for for things that could go wrong the biggest problem we face is mastitis and mastitis is caused when an inflammation gets up into the quarter and causes the milk to really go bad and the cow can get sick very very quickly and we're going to talk more about that in a few minutes but for right now uh, I hear that my daughter Stacy has got an, a little bit of an exercise video for you guys to do that kind of puts you doing some of the things that we do every day here at the farm. Okay, so we're going to cut to her. She's over in the baby calf barn. She's going to do some sort of exercise, and I need you guys to follow along with her. That way, when we come back, we're going to be in the milking parlor. You'll be ready to listen and pay attention when we're in the milking parlor. Okay, take it away, Stace. All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Stacy, and I am Louie's daughter, and I'm here at Rick Real Dairy's beautiful calf barn to give you a study break today. I know we've been at home a lot and not getting to go to school and have our regular PE days. So we thought you guys could use some exercise. So I know it's gonna feel a little weird cause you're at your computer screen. <laughs> but what I want you to do right now is get up with me and we're gonna exercise like people who know how to exercise really well. And that's a dairy farmer. They don't even realize they're exercising because it's just the work that they put in to make the delicious dairy products for you and for me. But they are hard workers. So I think we should try some of their exercise moves today, some of their work that they do. So everybody up, parents, if you're watching this with your kids, I want you up too. We're going to have a lot of fun. And this, guy, this girl is going to give us some help hopefully, or she's just gonna keep eating my shoe. So, all right, so what's the first thing a dairy farmer does in the morning? The very first thing he does when he wakes up is he gives a big stretch because he's getting up at three in the morning. He's getting up so early. So come on, everybody, stretch with me, arms out. Oh, it feels so good to stretch because it's three in the morning or four or five. All dairy farmers do it a little bit different, but 
We're gonna stretch one more time. I know it feels weird to be looking at your computer screen. <laughs> it feels a little weird to me too, but let's get into this and have some fun. So after the dairy farmer gets up, he goes to check his cow. He's gonna walk through a barn like this one or like the regular cows that you were just at with, uh, with my dad but he's gonna walk through. So I know you guys don't have barns to walk through, but we're just gonna walk in place today so we don't have to travel too far and the calves are gonna just help me and look at me like I'm weirdo. Now, hey, now when we're walking in the barns, this is not just a boring stroll. Like we are getting serious about this walk. So get in with me, let's get that heart rate up and keep on walking. Good job. All right, so after we've gone for our walk and we've checked our cows, then we need to feed the cows. The cows are hungry, right? So what does a farmer do? I want you to grab your pretend pitchfork and we're gonna stab a bale of alfalfa and give it to the cows, okay? So stab that bale of alfalfa and give it to the cows. Now, lucky you, you're doing this with air. They actually have alfalfa on the end of this pitchfork. That would be a lot of work. Now, don't forget to feed the cows over there. So stab that alfalfa and over here. Good job, guys. I'm not very coordinated with my pitchfork efforts here, but we've got the picture. Now, dairy farmers drive a lot of tractors and a lot of big trucks. And you know what? They actually have to climb ladders to get into those tractors. That's how big they are. So let's pretend to climb into our tractor, pull up high, pull yourself up like you're going up a ladder. Good job, I hope everybody's still doing. Don't leave me here all by myself. Exercise with me. Parents, stop laughing. Coworkers, I know you're watching this. Let's just get into it with me. We can do it. All right, now we are in the tractor. Whew. So another thing that uh, dairy farmers do is they clean the cow's bedding. What that means is that they take the, um, the, the bed where they're at, and you guys will see that in the virtual tour, and we're gonna rake out. <laughs> the calf is attacking the camera. We're gonna rake out that bedding. We're gonna get it all nice and clean for the cow. So rake with me, watch out for cow pies. We're gonna rake out that bedding. And over here too, we've got a lot of cows and a lot of beds to clean. Good job. Okay, now what's one thing I'm missing that the dairy farmers do? They milk the cows, that's right. So let's try milking a cow. All right, now wait a second. I'm milking a cow, but is the cow's udder up here? No, cow's udder is down here. So now we got a squat. You can do it, let's milk the cow. Now, you know, it takes about 10 minutes to milk the cow. So, you know, we've got about nine minutes and 30 seconds. No, I'm not gonna make you squat for 10 minutes. Hooey. Oh, but here comes the next cow. Let's do it again. We're milking the cow. <laughs> Great job, everybody. Oh, man. Thank you for moving with me. Now we're going to toss you back to my dad, who should be in the milking parlor. Okay, so who did the exercises? So it uh, wasn't that fun, but I, we tricked you guys because we don't milk our cows by hand. We do it all with machine, all automatically. Okay these animals just came in and so they're only going to be in this barn for about eight or nine minutes there's 23 cows on a side there's 23 on this side and there's 23 over here on on this side and sometimes they kick off the machine when it's finished okay so over here the these animals have been prepped and cleaned we spray them with a, a, a light iodine solution with some glycerin to keep the, their teats very nice and soft. We put the milking machine on. This tells us the number of the cow. This is number 1400. This is number 216, okay? As she's milking, the milk weights that will, will add up and then they automatically go to our computer so that we can use this information to manage our cows, okay? And once the machine's on, like these animals over here, these, 
these animals are just about finished and it's ready to, here it comes off, okay? So now she's all finished. It, she gave, says drop, this one gave 19 pounds. This cow over here gave 27 pounds. So remember what I said in the, in the other barn when we were talking about this, they're milked three times a day. So you take 27.6, multiply it by three, and that's how much milk she's given in a day, okay? So these cows are all what we call tail enders. They don't have a lot of milk right now, okay? We're near the end of the herd and, and the highest producing cows have come in. Once the machine comes off, we take our little wand here and we, we put a little dab of iodine on their teats. And what that does is that protects the teat from the mastitis that I was talking about, okay? Mastitis is caused when bacteria can find the opening where the milk comes out, it doesn't, the orifice doesn't close, and bacteria can go up in there. And that causes mastitis. And so this kind of plugs the hole for a little bit until the orifice and the cow can naturally protect itself from the mastitis, okay? So uh, I think we're out of time. We're gonna take some questions right now. This is a very quick close snapshot of the milking barn and the milking and our, what we do out in the barns for feeding. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go into the milk house. Actually, they're busy washing tanks in there. I'm just gonna, we're gonna walk over to the other calf barn slowly and I'll take questions over there. Awesome, well, thank you so much for that tour, Louie. You're welcome, it was fun. We've got a couple of questions that students have sent in. And the first one is, what is your favorite thing about working on a dairy farm? Oh, you know, and that's a very popular question. I think, I think my favorite thing to do is the one that I remember the most when I first started working on a dairy farm when I was 18 years old. And that's watching and helping cows have their babies. And the whole, the whole starting of life all over again and watching the calf come out and, and take its first steps and drink a gallon of colostrum. To me, that is by far the most rewarding part of the dairy. Wonderful. Our next question is, what are the different jobs that there are on the dairy farm? Okay, so that's a good question. You saw in the milking barn that there's two milkers down there milking all the time. So we have three milkers, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have two people that feed calves. We have two people that drive the trucks and feed all the cows. We have um, three mechanics that fix all the broken stuff. We have three guys that run all the tractors and do the farming. Then we have our maintenance guys. And then I'm in the office with my son, Nate, doing computer work and keeping track of everything um, and, and buying the food that we feed and, and everything else that, that goes into the daily management of the dairy. But also, altogether, there's 25 employees full-time that work here that take care of the cows and the land uh, in order to bring you guys a good, healthy product. Wonderful. Our next question is, what do you think is the most important thing that you need to become a successful farmer? Hmm. The most important thing to be a successful farmer, I think, love your job. Uh, this is a very hard job. Um, and uh, I like to say, never give up. But included with the never give up is really truly enjoy what you're doing. And when times are hard, like right now they are, and there's lots of families going through a lot of hard times, and the dairy industry is no different. Um, 
milk prices have collapsed for us. We just have to, I have to just gather myself together and, and tell myself, don't give up and do what you know best and let what you love. And so whatever you do in life, you can be successful if you really truly enjoy it. Awesome. All right, our last question for the day is what is your favorite dairy product? <laughs> favorite dairy product is like everybody else. I think it's ice cream. I like my vanilla ice cream, nice and thick and creamy uh, with, with some chocolate on it. I'm kind of a plain guy, but I like the vanilla with the chocolate. Uh, the Red Barn ice cream is by far my favorite ice cream. Um, next to that, I think it would be a Dairy Queen Blizzard or something, but I like the Red Barn ice cream and good, good hard ice cream from the, from the uh, freezer, from the grocery store. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having us out today and for showing us around your uh, Rick Real Dairy Farm and for answering all of the questions that we have. It was wonderful. So thank you so much. It was great to join you guys. You guys have a great day and stay safe and healthy. Take care. Great.